I'm Joe, a 48-year-old guy from Houston, fondly known as Big Joe among friends. I've been in the trucking game for nearly two decades, relishing every moment on the road. The company I work for, run by Morris, has a rich history in the transport business, with Morris being the third generation owner. Let me take you back around four years when I used to hit the road all week, including weekends. Weekdays were all about my regular routes for long-standing contracts, while weekends threw a mix of routine and new routes my way. This particular weekend brought a fresh client, needing a load transported from Austin to Monterey. I arrived early, the crew loaded me up, and I hit the I-35, bound for the drop-off in Monterey. The fog added an extra layer of challenge, but I was making good time when Morris buzzed in on the radio. Oddly, he instructed me to hold off on the delivery, advising me to pull over for an hour as the new client might change the drop-off location. A bit peculiar, but I complied, pulling over near Catula and deciding to find something to eat to pass the time. I spotted a diner, and the thought of a juicy burger and a large coke lured me in. As I approached the entrance, two guys casually strolled up, eyeing my truck. Hey, is that your rig? One of them asked, a sly grin spreading across his face. I nodded, sizing them up as I confirmed it was indeed my truck. They exchanged glances, their smiles widening, and that's when my instincts kicked in. Something about their interests set off alarm bells. Friendly as ever, I played it cool and asked, what's it to you? They replied, claiming to be curious about the cargo. Red flags waved, but I kept it light, telling them it was just another load for delivery. The conversation took a turn when they got specific, asking about the cargo, its destination, and its value. It felt invasive, and the fog outside seemed to thicken with tension. Deflecting their questions, I made up generic answers, but their persistence and exchanged glances hinted at ulterior motives. A chill crept down my spine, and I regretted stopping for a break. As I was about to excuse myself, one of them leaned in with a sinister grin. You know, we could make it worth your while to take a little peek inside that cargo. A deal, just between us. I played dumb, acting clueless but the atmosphere turned from curious to ominous. It dawned on me, these guys weren't just nosy, they were up to something. Deciding to end the conversation, I told them I had to hit the road. As I walked away, their voices became more insistent, more aggressive. One of them brandished a sharp object, shouting for me to halt. I managed to get back into my truck, locked the doors, and kept an eye on them through the rearview mirror. Pulling back onto the I-35, I couldn't help but wonder what would have happened if I hadn't escaped in time. Before we continue I want to say a big thanks to Aura for sponsoring this video. Now, let's talk about a horror story we're all a part of, our online privacy. I recently googled myself and uncovered a nightmare, loads of personal info exposed and sold by data brokers. This included my full name, phone number, and even my address. Aura's been my lifesaver in taking control of this. Aura found and stopped data brokers selling my info in just a few clicks. I just had to log in, go to vault, then data broker removal, it's that easy. Not only does it tackle spam, but Aura shields me from hackers too. It's a complete package, antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, all in one. You might have some tools already, but without Aura, it's like locking the front door but leaving the back door wide open. Aura's always on, keeping me and all the devices in my house safe and secure so I can focus on what matters. If privacy matters to you too, then I highly recommend trying out Aura. You can start a two-week free trial at aura.com slash horrorhut. Links in the description. Thanks Aura, for keeping us secure online. Now, let's continue with the video. I'm a trucker, been on the road for years, hauling loads from one place to another. It's not glamorous, but it pays the bills. One night, I was driving through the desolate Midwest, just me in the open road. The radio was on, crackling with static, 
and the only thing keeping me company was the hum of the engine. Out of nowhere, I saw a figure on the side of the road. Hitchhiker. Now, I know it's not the safest thing to pick up strangers, but this was the middle of nowhere, and the night was dark. Maybe it was the loneliness of the road or the sheer exhaustion, but I decided to pull over. The hitchhiker was a woman, shivering in the cold. She looked harmless enough, so I motioned for her to hop in. She had this distant look in her eyes, like she had a story to tell, but I didn't pry. We drove in silence for a while, the only sound being the hum of the wheels on the asphalt. As we went along, I noticed she kept glancing at the small, nondescript bag she carried. Didn't pay it much mind at first, people carry all sorts of things. But then, she started acting strange. Restless. Fidgety. It set me on edge, but I tried to focus on the road. I tried making small talk, asking where she was headed. She mumbled something about needing to get far away. That's when I started regretting my decision to pick her up. The atmosphere inside the truck grew tense, and I could sense something was off. Out of nowhere, she asked me to pull over. We were in the middle of nowhere, just fields and darkness. I hesitated, but she insisted. So, I pulled over, and that's when she turned to me with this chilling smile. I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. She reached for the bag, and my instinct screamed at me that something was very wrong. Before I could react, she pulled out a knife. I didn't know what game she was playing, but I sure as hell wanted no part in it. Terrified, I tried to reason with her, ask what she wanted. But she just kept grinning, that knife glinting in the dim light. It became clear, she had no intention of just hitching a ride. I slammed on the gas, not caring where we were headed, I just needed to get away. She lunged at me, and I swerved, the truck careening on the empty road. The radio blared static, mixing with my pounding heartbeat. I didn't stop until I saw lights in the distance, a gas station. I pulled in, my hand shaking. She made a run for it, disappearing into the night. I locked the doors, breathing heavy, and dialed the police. Turns out, she was wanted for some serious stuff, a string of violent crimes. If I hadn't trusted my gut, who knows what would have happened. I'm just a regular trucker, hauling freight across the fastness of the southwest. I've seen my fair share of desolate rest stops, but this one, out in the middle of nowhere, was different. The sun was setting, casting long shadows across the desert landscape. I pulled into the rest stop, my headlights cutting through the gathering darkness. There was only one other truck parked there, and I could see the dim glow of the rest stop's single light. As I stepped out, the air was thick with an eerie silence. The attendance booth had a flickering fluorescent light, and the whole place had that worn-down feel. The attendant, a lanky guy with unkempt hair, stared at me with hollow eyes as I approached. I could feel something off about him, but I chalked it up to the loneliness of these remote places. I handed him a few bills for the shower and parking, and he just stared, not saying a word. I tried to shake off the weird vibe and headed to the restroom. Inside, the fluorescent lights buzzed, and the cracked tiles on the floor added to the general sense of neglect. The air was stale, and a chill ran down my spine. I hurried through my business, eager to get back on the road. When I returned to the truck, I noticed the attendant standing by the booth, still staring. He muttered something incomprehensible under his breath. I tried to ignore it, climbed into my rig, and settled in for the night. Hours later, I was jolted awake by a loud banging on the side of the truck. Startled, I peered out the window and saw the attendant, his eyes wide and wild. He was muttering again, words I couldn't quite catch. I yelled at him to leave me alone, but he just kept on, more agitated than before. 
Unease settled over me as I realized I was alone in this desolate place with a guy who seemed to be unraveling. I decided to leave, but as I started the engine, he stepped in front of my truck, blocking my way. Panic set in. I honked the horn, hoping to scare him off, but he just stood there, staring at me with a disturbing intensity. Desperation kicked in, and I floored it, narrowly missing him. The rest stopped disappeared in the rearview mirror, but my relief was short-lived. Glancing back, I saw him in the distance, chasing after me like a madman. I pushed the accelerator harder, my heart pounding. Miles down the road, I finally saw the lights of a small town. I pulled into a gas station, praying he wouldn't follow. As I caught my breath, I realized how close I had come to something truly horrifying. That night, in the quiet of the southwest, I learned that sometimes the real terrors are not in the vast desert, but in the disturbed minds of those you encounter in the loneliest places. I'm just a trucker, you know? Hauling freight through the Rockies like I've done for years. It's a tough job, but I'm used to the long hours, the winding roads, and the solitude. It's just me, my truck, and the open load. One night, though, things got weird. I was driving through the Rockies, the moonlight casting eerie shadows on the mountain peaks. The air felt different, charged with an electricity I couldn't quite put my finger on. I tried to shake off the unease, blaming it on fatigue. As I rounded a bend, my headlights caught something on the side of the road. A figure. A person standing there in the darkness. Now, these mountain roads aren't exactly pedestrian friendly, and I couldn't fathom why someone would be out there at that hour. I slowed down, peering through the windshield. The figure was a woman, wearing a tattered dress, her hair wild in the mountain wind. I hesitated, my instinct screaming at me to keep driving, but against my better judgment, I stopped. She approached, and her eyes were vacant, like she was lost in another world. She mumbled something I couldn't understand, and I asked if she needed help. No response. Just that vacant stare. I was getting seriously creeped out, but I couldn't leave her there alone in the middle of nowhere. I offered a ride and she climbed into the cab without a word. The moment she was in, the atmosphere inside the truck shifted. It felt heavy, like a storm was brewing. I tried making small talk, but she remained silent, staring out into the darkness. The unease grew as we climbed higher into the mountains. That's when the inexplicable started happening. I saw shadows moving in the periphery of my vision, flickering in the moonlight. But every time I turned to look, there was nothing there. I chalked it up to fatigue, the winding mountain roads playing tricks on my mind. Then, the radio started acting up. Static filled the cab, and strange whispers cut through. I couldn't make out the words, but it sent shivers down my spine. I tried turning it off, but the whispers persisted. I looked at the woman, half expecting her to be the source of the weirdness. Her eyes met mine, and for a moment, I saw a darkness there, something beyond the vacant stare. Fear gripped me as I questioned my sanity. I needed to get out of there, away from the unsettling presence. I pulled over at the next gas station, the woman still silent beside me. When I turned to tell her we had arrived, she was gone. Vanished into thin air. I parked, trembling and surveyed the desolate gas station. The mountains loomed in the distance, silent witnesses to whatever strange encounter I had just lived through. I couldn't shake the feeling that those ancient peaks held secrets, stories untold. The rest of the journey through the Rockies felt like a surreal nightmare. I questioned my sanity, replaying the events in my mind.
Just a regular trucker. That's me. Cruising through the Northeast, hauling cargo for what seemed like a solid company. It's been years on the road, and I never thought I'd stumble onto something that would make my blood run cold. The company was all smiles on the surface. Decent pay, good roots, nothing out of the ordinary. But one day, a seemingly routine delivery turned my whole world upside down. I was assigned a special haul, told to pick up a sealed container and transport it to a remote warehouse. It felt off, but I shrugged it off, thinking it was just another quirky job in the trucking world. The day arrived, and I rolled up to the warehouse. It looked deserted, like it hadn't seen action in years. I got out, handed the paperwork to a shady-looking guy in a suit, and they loaded the container onto my rig. As I drove through the winding roads, curiosity got the better of me. I knew I shouldn't, but the nagging feeling in my gut pushed me to take a peek inside the container during a pit stop. I cracked it open, and what I saw froze me in my tracks. It wasn't just regular cargo. It was stacks of cash, bundles of it. I felt a chill down my spine. What had I gotten myself into? The next delivery, I couldn't shake the unease. The seemingly routine job became a haunting puzzle. I started noticing strange patterns, like the roots always avoiding the prying eyes of law enforcement. Red flags waved in my face, but I couldn't just walk away. Late one night, I overheard a conversation on the company's radio frequency. It was the owner, an enigmatic figure I'd never seen in person. He spoke in coded language, discussing shipments, payments, and things I couldn't comprehend. The pieces started falling into place. I realized I was just a pawn in an elaborate game, transporting illegal goods under the guise of innocent cargo. The seemingly reputable company was a front for a criminal operation, and I was knee-deep in it. Fear nodded me as I grappled with the reality of the situation. I knew I had to expose the truth, but the stakes were high. The owner, this elusive puppet master, had eyes and ears everywhere. Every mile I drove, paranoia grew. I started noticing unmarked cars tailing me, shadowy figures lingering in the corners of truck stops. My life wasn't mine anymore, I was a target. One night, as I parked in a secluded rest area, a message flashed on my truck's computer. It was a warning, a chilling reminder that they knew I was onto them. Panic set in as I realized how deep I dug myself. I reached out to a journalist I'd met on the road, someone I thought could help. But before we could meet, my truck was rammed off the road. I fought to regain control, the adrenaline pumping as I narrowly avoided a catastrophic crash. I met the journalist in a dimly lit diner, desperation in my eyes. As I spilled the beans, fear etched on my face, he assured me we'd expose the truth. Little did I know, the danger was far from over. The following weeks were a whirlwind of covert meetings, whispered conversations, and a constant looking over my shoulder feeling. The journalist dug deeper, uncovering the criminal empire that reached far beyond the trucking facade. One night, as I parked at a truck stop, a shadowy figure approached. A henchman sent by the owner, a message that I couldn't escape this web of crime. He uttered ominous threats, chilling words that sent shivers down my spine. I became a pawn in a dangerous game of cat and mouse, the stakes escalating every day. The journalist's expose was about to go public, and the criminal empire was unraveling. But as I stared at my reflection in the dimly lit truck stop bathroom, I knew the shadows wouldn't release their grip on me easily. The night the story broke, chaos ensued. Law enforcement swarmed the company, arrests were made, and the criminal web began to unravel. But in the midst of the chaos, I received a haunting message, a veiled threat that my role in exposing the truth hadn't gone unnoticed. As I drove away from the now infamous company, the weight of what I'd uncovered sank in. I was free from the clutches of the criminal operation, but the scars, both seen and unseen, would forever mark my journey as a trucker who stumbled onto a darkness he never expected.
In the rearview mirror, the northeastern landscape stretched out before me, a silent witness to the secrets hidden in its folds. The road ahead was uncertain, and the enigmatic owner, though exposed, remained a specter in the shadows, a reminder that some webs of crime were never fully dismantled. We were driving through the Pacific Northwest, just a couple on a road trip. The rain beat against the windshield as we pulled into a gas station, seeking refuge from the storm. The flickering neon sign buzzed overhead, casting an eerie glow on the wet pavement. Inside the dimly lit convenience store, a peculiar looking attendant eyed us as we grabbed some snacks. His eyes, weathered and tired, held a hint of something unsettling. As we approached the counter, he shot us a cryptic warning. Be careful around these parts, especially that trucker over there, he muttered, nodding towards a solitary figure in a corner booth, hunched over a cup of coffee. We exchanged uneasy glances, dismissing the warning as the ramblings of a small town eccentric. Ignoring the chilled words sent down our spines, we paid for our snacks and headed back to the car. The trucker, a shadowy figure in the corner, never looked up. The rain intensified as we hit the road again, the gas station fading in the rearview mirror. Hours passed, and the winding roads seemed to stretch endlessly through the dense forest. The rain became a relentless downpour, and visibility dropped to near zero. That's when we noticed it, the same trucker from the gas station, his rig looming large in the rearview mirror. Unease settled in as he tailgated us relentlessly, his headlights piercing through the relentless rain. We tried to shake him off, but he stuck to our bumper like a shadow. Thoughts of the gas station attendant's warning resurfaced, and fear began to gnaw at us. Desperation set in as we veered off the main road, hoping to lose the persistent trucker on the smaller, darker paths. But he followed, tire treads cutting through the rain-soaked gravel. Panic surged as we realized there was no escaping this relentless pursuer. In a moment of sheer terror, the trucker's rig pulled alongside us. The driver, obscured by the rain-soaked window, made no attempt to communicate. He just stared, an unsettling gaze that sent shivers down our spines. The gas station attendant's warning echoed in our minds. With a sudden jolt, the trucker veered in front of us, forcing us to a screeching halt. The forest seemed to close in around us as the rain pounded on the roof, drowning out the sounds of our panicked breaths. The trucker climbed down, his silhouette emerging from the storm. He approached our car, his face obscured by the hood of his rain-soaked jacket. The gas station attendant's warning became a haunting reality as the trucker produced a knife, glinting ominously in the dim light. Time seemed to stretch as we stared into the abyss of his intentions. Suddenly, headlights pierced through the darkness, revealing a patrol car rounding the bend. The trucker, caught in the act, retreated into the shadows. The police officer, oblivious to the horrors that had unfolded, pulled over to check on us. We stumbled over our words, trying to convey the terror that had gripped us. The officer, skeptical but concerned, radioed for backup. As they investigated, we saw the trucker's rig disappearing into the rainy night. The gas station attendant's warning, once dismissed as the ramblings of an eccentric, now held weight. The encounter had unraveled into a nightmarish reality, leaving us shaken and scarred. I was cruising down a desolate stretch of highway in the vast southwest, just me and the endless desert horizon. The sun beat down, making the heat shimmer off the asphalt. My little car was my cocoon, the only company in this lonely landscape. As I drove, I noticed a big rig in my rearview mirror. It loomed larger with each passing mile, and I couldn't shake the feeling it was tailing me. Maybe just a fellow traveler on the same lonesome road, I thought, 
trying to dismiss the uneasy feeling settling in my gut. But as the miles rolled on, the truck stayed relentlessly close. I'd speed up, it would speed up, I'd slow down, it would slow down. It was like a dance under the scorching sun, and my heartbeat quickened with every move. I couldn't see the driver, just a massive metal beast behind me, and the feeling of being pursued grew. I glanced at the gas gauge, praying I wouldn't have to pull over in this desolate stretch. The truck's presence felt like a shadow, a relentless force that refused to let go. Desperation crept in as I scanned the barren landscape for any sign of civilization. The trucker, faceless in my imagination, seemed like an ominous specter against the vast desert canvas. The isolation of the southwest, once awe-inspiring, now felt suffocating. I tried to convince myself it was all in my head. Maybe the trucker had the same destination, and it was all a bizarre coincidence. But the paranoia lingered, an invisible weight on my shoulders, urging me to escape this relentless pursuit. With trembling hands, I dialed the local police, trying to articulate the growing fear in my chest. They assured me they'd send someone, but the fastness of the desert made me feel like a lone ant in a vast, uncaring world. As I pressed on, the truck's presence became more oppressive. It wasn't just following now, it was tailgating, a metallic menace on my tail. The desert, once expansive and awe-inspiring, now felt like a trap closing in. I took an abrupt turn onto a smaller road, hoping to lose my pursuer in the labyrinth of desert trails. But the truck followed, a relentless predator in this scorching wilderness. Panic set in as I realized there was no escape, just a vast desert swallowing us both. I floored the accelerator, my little car straining against the relentless pursuit. The sun blazed overhead, scorching everything in its path. The truck, a monstrous silhouette, refused to relent. The radio crackled with static, my desperate pleas for help drowned in the vast emptiness. In the distance, I spotted a gas station, a lone outpost in this desolate expanse. The hope of sanctuary fueled my resolve, and I sped toward it, the truck still hot on my heels. The gas station appeared like a mirage, a potential refuge from this nightmarish chase. I skidded into the station, tires screeching, and stumbled out of the car, gasping for breath. The truck pulled in behind me, its engine growling like a predatory beast. I sprinted toward the station, praying for someone to help, someone to intervene in this relentless pursuit. The gas station attendant, a weathered face framed by a trucker hat, eyed me with concern. I blurted out the situation, the fear, the pursuit, and he nodded knowingly. He radioed the police, his eyes narrowing as he glanced at the ominous trucker. As the police arrived, the trucker, finally revealed in the harsh daylight, wore a menacing scowl. The police questioned him, and I stood, shaken and exhausted, watching this faceless specter turn into a human with malicious intent. They arrested him, his dark motives lay bare in the harsh desert sun. The relief washed over me, but the desert seemed to retain the echoes of the chase, a vast, unforgiving canvas where a solitary traveler had faced a relentless pursuer under the scorching southwest sun. I'm just your average trucker, nothing fancy. Been on the road for years, hauling freight from one end of the country to the other. The Great Plains, vast and seemingly endless, have become my second home. There's a routine to it, a rhythm that keeps me going. One day, my rake started acting up, sputtering and coughing like an old man with a heavy smoker's cough. I couldn't risk a breakdown in the middle of nowhere so I pulled into a little mechanic shop on the outskirts of a quiet town. The place looked like it had seen better days, but sometimes those are the best places to get a quick fix. I walked into the shop, greeted by the smell of motor oil and the distant clang of tools. The mechanic, a burly guy with oil-stained overalls, looked up from under the hood of another truck. 
I explained my issue, and he nodded, grumbling something about a quick look. As he worked, I wandered around the shop, killing time. It was then that I noticed something strange, a series of scratch marks on the concrete floor, leading to a trapdoor in the corner. It piqued my curiosity, and I couldn't help but wonder what secrets this mechanic was hiding beneath the surface. The mechanic finished up, claiming it was just a loose belt. I paid up, but my mind was still fixated on that trapdoor. I concocted some excuse about needing to stretch my legs and casually strolled toward it. Opening it revealed a dark, narrow staircase leading into what seemed like an underground chamber. My heart raced as I descended into the dimly lit space. The air was heavy, filled with a peculiar smell, not the usual grease and oil, something more sinister. The walls were lined with shelves, not filled with spare parts, but with rows of mysterious containers. My eyes widened as I realized they were filled with human organs, preserved like macabre trophies. I stumbled back, my breath catching in my throat. The mechanic had followed me down, a sinister smile on his face. He revealed the grim truth, an illegal organ trafficking operation thriving beneath the facade of a simple mechanic shop. My discovery meant trouble for him, and the smile twisted into a snarl. Terrified, I sprinted back up the stairs, my mind racing with the realization that I'd stumbled into something far darker than a routine pit stop. I burst out of the shop, fumbling for my phone to call the police. The mechanic chased after me, a malevolent force unwilling to let me expose his gruesome secret. As I spoke to the dispatcher, detailing the horrors below the mechanic's shop, the mechanic lunged at me. Fear and adrenaline surged through my veins as I dodged his grasp. The police promised to arrive soon, but the mechanic wasn't backing down. I sprinted through the quiet town, the mechanic hot on my heels. Panic set in as I realized I was alone in this fight, trying to outrun a man who had something to hide, something monstrous lurking beneath the shop. I ducked into alleys, zigzagged through deserted streets, but he was relentless. The town, once a peaceful backdrop to my routine pit stop, transformed into a labyrinth of terror. My breaths came in lagged gasps as I desperately searched for a way to escape. The distant wail of sirens signaled the arrival of the police, but the mechanic's pursuit intensified. I rounded a corner, finding myself face to face with an abandoned warehouse. Without thinking, I darted inside, seeking refuge in the darkness. The mechanic followed, the eerie silence broken only by the echoes of our footsteps. Fear clawed in my throat as I navigated the labyrinth and interior, the dim light revealing the shadows of forgotten crates and rusted machinery. I found a hiding spot, heart pounding, praying the police would arrive in time. The mechanic prowled the warehouse, a predator in pursuit of its prey. I held my breath, every footstep of his sending shivers down my spine. The warehouse became a battleground of suspense, the mechanic closing in with each passing second. The distant wail of sirens grew louder, signaling the approaching police. In the darkness, our fates hung in the balance, a collision of ordinary routine and a nightmarish secret lurking beneath the Great Plains. I was finally rescued and to this day I still have nightmares about what happened. I'm just a trucker, plain and simple. Been on the road for what feels like forever, hauling loads across the southeast. You get used to the long hours and the hum of the engine. But there was this one night, a few years back, that still sends shivers down my spine. I was driving through the back roads of Georgia when my rig decided to call it quits. Just died on me, middle of nowhere. No cell phone signal just the darkness and the sound of crickets. So, there I was, stuck in the middle of the southern wilderness, praying for a miracle. I managed to find a spot with a weak signal, just enough to call for roadside assistance. They promised someone would be out to help, but the ETA was a mystery. With nothing else to do, 
I sat in my truck, surrounded by the oppressive quiet of the night. Eventually, headlights appeared in the distance. Relief washed over me as the tow truck pulled up. The guy driving it was a burly fella, wearing a stained uniform that looked like it had seen better days. But beggars can't be choosers, right? He introduced himself as Roy, the local mechanic. Looked like he hadn't seen a good night's sleep in years. We exchanged a few words, and he got to work on my rig. As he tinkered around, I couldn't shake this feeling that something wasn't right. The air felt heavy, like a storm was brewing, but the skies were clear. Roy mumbled to himself, occasionally shooting me a glance that made my skin crawl. He seemed nervous, jittery even. I chalked it up to the pressure of fixing a stranded truck in the dead of night. But as he worked, the atmosphere shifted from uneasy to downright sinister. I asked him how long it would take, and he replied with a vague, just a little longer, almost done. But the shadows danced around him, and his eyes held a glint of something malevolent. It was then that I noticed a toolbox by his side, filled with tools that seemed a little too sharp, a little too menacing. The minutes turned into an eternity, and Roy's movements became more erratic. He kept glancing towards the woods, as if expecting someone or something. My instincts were on high alert, telling me that I needed to get out of there, but my truck was still in pieces, and the southern night held me captive. Suddenly, Roy stood up, wiping his hands on a rag. His eyes, once avoiding mine, locked onto me with an intensity that sent chills down my spine. He muttered something about needing to check something under the truck and gestured for me to step out. As I reluctantly got out of my truck, I noticed the isolation of the place. No other cars on the road, no signs of civilization. The dim glow of the tow truck's headlights was the only source of light in that sea of darkness. Roy crouched down, pretending to inspect the undercarriage. That's when it hit me, this was a trap. There was no breakdown, my truck had been sabotaged. Panic surged through me as I realized I was alone in the dark with a mechanic who had sinister intentions. I took a step back, my mind racing for a plan. Roy, sensing my unease, stood up with a twisted grin. In that moment, instinct took over, and I bolted into the woods. The night swallowed me whole as I sprinted through the thick foliage, each step echoing with the pounding of my heart. I heard Roy shouting behind me his threats slicing through the night air. My lungs burned, but fear fueled my legs. Branches scratched at my face, and the uneven ground threatened to trip me, but I didn't dare look back. Eventually, I stumbled onto a road, and distant headlights signaled the approach of another vehicle. I flagged it down, breathless and terrified. The driver, a kind soul, offered to call the police and help me get to safety. As we drove away, I glanced back, half expecting Roy to emerge from the shadows. The police arrived, and I explained everything, the breakdown, the mechanic with a sinister plan. They assured me they'd look into it, but I couldn't shake the feeling that Roy's malevolence ran deeper than that dark southern night. I'm just a regular trucker, been on the road for ages, hauling loads across this vast desert. It's lonely out here, just the hum of the engine and the endless horizon. One night, a few years back, things went from routine to a living nightmare. I was part of a convoy, a bunch of us truckers sticking together through the desert. Safety in numbers, they say. It was late, and the moon hung low in the sky casting an eerie glow over the sandy landscape. We were making good time, just us in the road, when things took a dark turn. Headlights appeared on the horizon, a group of bikers riding towards us. At first, we thought nothing of it, just fellow travelers, maybe some bikers on a late night ride. But as they got closer, an unease settled in the pit of my stomach. Something about them felt off. The lead biker pulled up next to our convoy, 
giving us a cold stare. No words exchanged, just the rumble of their engines cutting through the night. We kept driving, thinking they'd pass us by, but that's when it started. Out of nowhere, one of the bikers veered towards the first truck in our convoy. It happened so fast, the screech of tires, the deafening crash. We watched in horror as the biker sped away, leaving chaos in its wake. The rest of the convoy slowed down, trying to make sense of the wreckage. Fear hung heavy in the air. We radioed for help, but the bikers weren't done. They circled us like vultures, choosing their next target. Another truck went down, the bikers weaving in and out with deadly precision. Panic set in, and we were caught in a nightmare we couldn't escape. The desert, once vast and empty, now felt like a trap closing in on us. The convoy became a target, the bikers picking us off one by one. It was chaos, the night shattered by the screams and the twisted metal. Each passing moment, the dread deepened. We were helpless, just trying to survive the relentless assault. Our radios buzzed with a mix of frantic pleas for help and the cold laughter of the bikers. They weren't after our cargo or money, it was something darker, something sinister that I couldn't quite grasp. The desert, once a vast expanse of solitude, had become a hunting ground. As the night wore on, the convoy dwindled. Trucks lay broken and abandoned, and the remaining survivors clung to the hope of making it out alive. The bikers, faceless in the darkness, continued their assault. There was no reasoning with them, no understanding their motives. They were predators in the night, and we were their prey. Eventually, I found myself alone on that desolate road, surrounded by the wreckage of the convoy. The bikers had vanished into the night, leaving only the echoes of their malevolent laughter. My rig, battered and bruised, became my only refuge. I drove through the desert, haunted by the events of that night. The headlights of my truck cut through the darkness, revealing the scars of a convoy torn apart by an inexplicable horror. A few years back, I was on a long stretch of highway, tired as hell, looking for something to keep me awake. That's when I found it, the late night radio show. The signal was weak, the voice on the radio scratchy and distorted. It was some guy talking in a low, almost hypnotic tone. He had this eerie charisma, drawing me in like a moth to a flame. I couldn't explain it, it felt like he was speaking directly to me. He called himself the Night Watchman, and the topics he dealt into were bizarre, like secrets hidden in plain sight, the darkness beneath the surface of everyday life. It was chilling, but I couldn't turn it off. His voice echoed through the cab, seeping into my mind like a fog. The Night Watchman began talking about desires buried deep within us, things we never admit to wanting. It was unnerving and I found myself hooked, unable to resist the pull of his words. He spoke of a different reality, one where inhibitions were cast aside, and primal instincts ruled. As I drove through the night, his voice took on a hypnotic quality. I felt like a passenger in my own truck, his words steering me into uncharted territory. The road became a blur, and my surroundings twisted into a surreal landscape. The night watchman started issuing commands, strange and unsettling. He spoke of a hidden world where true freedom awaited, but only for those brave enough to embrace the darkness. I couldn't resist, it was like a compulsion, a force beyond my control. He told me to pull over, somewhere remote, away from prying eyes. I found a desolate spot, the darkness swallowing the truck. The radio crackled with his instructions pushing me to do things I'd never consider in my right mind. It was as if the night watchman had taken control, puppeteering me from the airwaves. I stepped out into the cold night, the radio still playing his hypnotic monologue. The instructions grew more disturbing, leading me to the cargo hold. My hands moved mechanically, 
opening the trailer with a sense of dread gnawing in my insides. The cargo, precious and innocent, was now at the mercy of the night watchman's commands. I shuddered at the realization of what I was doing, but I couldn't break free from his influence. It was like a nightmare unfolding in the dead of night. The night watchman reveled in the chaos, his voice escalating as I followed his every directive. The cargo became a sacrificial offering to the dark forces he spoke of, and I was just a pawn in his twisted game. As the night wore on, the trance began to lift. I found myself standing alone, surrounded by the consequences of my actions. The cargo, once secure and untouched, now bore the scars of a nightmarish ordeal. The radio fell silent, the night watchman's ominous presence fading into the static. I was left alone in the cold night, haunted by the realization of what I had become a pawn in a macabre radio show that pushed me to the edge of sanity. I was just a guy looking for a job, you know? A regular Joe. The economy wasn't doing great, and I needed work. So, when I saw an ad for a trucking gig in the southeast, I thought, why not? Little did I know, that decision would lead me down a twisted path. The recruiter, a guy named Carl, seemed friendly enough at first. He had this polished spiel about the company, the benefits, the roots. Sounded like a dream job. But the devil's in the details, they say. As I went through the hiring process, things started to get weird. Carl kept asking about my personal life, almost prying into it. I chalked it up to his quirky personality, but there was something off about the way he looked at me. Like he was sizing me up, measuring my worth for something beyond just a trucking job. One day, I overheard some hushed conversations at the office. Whispers about drivers who vanished without a trace, routes that led to nowhere. I couldn't ignore the sinking feeling that I was stepping into a nightmare. The training started, and Carl became more than just a recruiter. He was my instructor, and every lesson felt like a descent into a darker world. He spoke cryptically about the road, the places we'd go, and the secrets hidden in the long stretches of highways. One night, after a grueling training session, I found a map in Carl's office. It had markings on it, routes that coincided with the disappearances. The connection hit me like a ton of bricks. I was in the belly of the beast, surrounded by a mystery I never signed up for. As my first solo run approached, the tension in the air thickened. Carl's smiles became more menacing, his eyes colder. I realized I had stumbled into something beyond my control, something that went way beyond a trucking job. On the road, I started noticing oddities, strange cargo, unscheduled stops, and Carl's eerie instructions. The feeling of being watched was relentless, like unseen eyes were following my every move. The road became a trap, each mile closing in on me. One night, parked in a desolate rest area, I uncovered the truth. The cargo I was hauling wasn't just goods, it was a dark secret, a connection to the vanished drivers. Carl's twisted agenda unfolded, and I became a pawn in a sinister game. Fear gripped me as I realized my life was hanging by a thread. Quitting wasn't an option, I was entangled in a web of danger. The disappearances weren't accidents, they were orchestrated, and I was the unwitting accomplice. I decided to confront Carl to demand answers. But he was always one step ahead, his smile widening with each passing day. The dark secrets of the company were closing in, and I was trapped in the headlights of a freight train, hurtling toward an unknown abyss. The final straw came when I found a dossier in Carl's office, a record of the vanished drivers, their faces frozen in photographs, their stories lost to the shadows. It was a chilling revelation, and I knew I had to escape before I became the next entry in that macabre archive. One night, I left without a word, abandoning the truck and the horrors it carried. I drove into the night, 
haunted by the shadows of the road. The company's secrets trailed behind me like a ghostly convoy. I never looked back, but the memories of that twisted journey lingered. I was just a guy looking for a job, but what I found was a descent into darkness, a brush with something beyond comprehension. I'm just a guy who drives a truck. Been on the road for ages, crisscrossing the country, hauling goods from one place to another. It's a simple life, or at least it used to be, until that fateful night in the dense forests of the Pacific Northwest. I had a routine, you know? Hit the road early, drive for hours, take my breaks at lonely rest areas. But that night, I found myself on an unfamiliar route. A shortcut, they said. Little did I know, it would lead me straight into the heart of something sinister. As I navigated the winding roads, the forest seemed to swallow me whole. The trees loomed like shadows, and the darkness clung to the air. There was this eerie silence, broken only by the hum of my engine. That's when I saw them, a convoy of trucks, parked in a clearing, their headlights cutting through the darkness. I thought maybe it was a trucker meetup, a pit stop for the night. But as I approached, the air turned heavy with tension. These weren't regular truckers, they were a gang, a band of road drivers with a look in their eyes that sent shivers down my spine. I parked a bit away, trying to keep to myself. But they noticed me, and one of them, a burly guy with a menacing grin, approached. He asked about my rig, my cargo, all the usual trucker talk. But his eyes told a different story, like he was sizing me up for something more. As I chatted, I noticed the others eyeing me, whispering among themselves. It felt like I stumbled into a world where the rules weren't written on the road signs. The burly guy, let's call him Redbeard, invited me to join their crew for the night. Something about a brotherhood, a tight-knit group of truckers helping each other out. I was hesitant, but curiosity got the better of me. Little did I know, it was the beginning of a descent into hell. They led me to a makeshift camp, deep in the woods. The atmosphere was thick with smoke from a crackling fire. I noticed a sense of camaraderie, but beneath it, an undercurrent of something darker. They offered me a drink, a toast to brotherhood, they said. As I took a sip, I started feeling woozy. The world spun, and my senses dulled. That's when Redbeard revealed their initiation ritual. They called it the Rhodes Embrace. A twisted ceremony where newcomers prove their worthiness by enduring a night in the woods, hunted by the seasoned members. I tried to protest, but my voice was a mere whisper. They stripped me of my keys, leaving me defenseless in the forest's grip. Panic set in as they released me into the darkness, laughing like hyenas. The forest became a labyrinth of nightmares. I stumbled through the underbrush, every rustle of leaves sending my heart into overdrive. Shadows danced in the periphery, and I felt the weight of unseen eyes watching my every move. Time lost its meaning as I ran, my breath ragged, my senses heightened by fear. Snap! A twig broke behind me. I dared not look back, knowing that whatever hunted me was relentless. Eventually, exhaustion caught up, and I collapsed against a tree. The night seemed endless, the darkness swallowing me whole. That's when I heard footsteps closing in. My heart pounded as I realized they found me. The gang emerged from the shadows, their eyes glinting with a mixture of amusement and triumph. Redbeard patted me on the back, congratulating me on surviving the initiation. I was in, part of their twisted brotherhood. As I stumbled back to my truck, I couldn't shake the feeling that I stepped into a nightmare. The forest, once a sanctuary, now held the echoes of their twisted rituals. I drove away, leaving the haunting darkness of the Pacific Northwest behind me. The road stretched ahead, but the memory of that night clung to my soul. 
The woods, the gang, the initiation, a chapter of horror etched into my life as a lone trucker. And as the miles rolled by, I couldn't escape the chilling truth that the road I traveled had secrets darker than the shadows in the Pacific Northwest Forest. I signed up for trucking school out in the Great Plains, thinking it was my ticket to a new life. The ad said they'd teach me everything about the open road, the rigs, and the freedom of the highway. Little did I know, it was more like signing up for a descent into darkness. First day, I walked into the place. Dingy walls, flickering lights, the whole deal. The instructor, a grizzled guy with a permanent scowl, started off normal enough. Welcome to the school, he said, eyeing us like we were fresh meat. He had this vibe, you know, something off about him, but I chalked it up to the stress of the job. Weeks went by, and the lessons seemed okay at first. We were learning to shift gears, handle the big rigs, the basics. But then, things started getting weird. He'd throw in these random emergency scenarios, like what to do if a car swerved in front of you or if your brakes failed. I mean, we were just beginners, not seasoned drivers. One day, after the usual lectures, he called me over. You've got potential, he said with a smirk. I didn't know whether to take it as a compliment or a warning. That's when he told me about the special lessons for those with promise. Curiosity got the better of me. What was supposed to be a regular driving lesson turned into something straight out of a nightmare. He'd take me to these isolated roads, far from prying eyes. No other students, just me and him in that big rig. The first time, he asked me to pull over in the middle of nowhere. He said he needed to check the engine or some crap. I'm sitting there, clueless, when I notice him eyeing me differently. It felt wrong, like I was prey in the sights of a predator. He started asking personal questions, things that had nothing to do with trucking. My gut told me to get out of there, but I didn't want to fail. Next thing I knew, he handed me a package and said it needed to be delivered ASAP. No company markings, no details, just a vague address and a sense of unease. As I drove, that package weighed heavy on my mind. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was mixed up in something I shouldn't be. The address led me to an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. My nerves were shot, but I went inside. The place was pitch black, my footsteps echoing like whispers in the silence. That's when I saw them, shady figures lurking in the shadows. They wanted the package, no questions asked. I handed it over, trying to act like it was just another day on the job. The instructor's lessons turned into a series of increasingly dangerous runs. I felt like I was caught in a web, each delivery pulling me deeper into some criminal underworld. I tried telling the school, but they brushed it off, saying it was part of the training. I was on my own. One night, he took me to a remote area, far from any towns. The cargo this time was different, something he wouldn't even show me. Red flags flew, but I had no choice. As we approached the drop-off, a chill ran down my spine. It was a rendezvous with masked men in the dead of night. I overheard whispers about illegal goods, smuggling, and a network that stretched far beyond the trucking school. My heart pounded as the realization hit this wasn't just a shady instructor, it was a criminal operation. I knew I had to get out, but every attempt to quit ended with threats and intimidation. They made it clear I was in too deep, and there was no turning back. One night, I made a desperate move. While the instructor was occupied, I slipped away, leaving that trucking school nightmare behind. I drove through the night, haunted by the shadows of my ordeal.
there I was, just another day on the open road in my big rig. The sun was beating down on the endless stretches of highway in the southwest, making the asphalt shimmer in the heat. I liked the freedom of the road, the hum of the engine, and the rhythm of the wheels against the pavement. I got a call from dispatch about a last-minute job or rush delivery, they said. The cargo needed to be in some desolate town by nightfall. Seemed urgent, and I could use the extra pay, so I accepted without asking too many questions. The pickup was at a nondescript warehouse on the outskirts of a small town. A couple of guys in suits handed me the cargo manifest and said it was fragile. They emphasized the need for speed but didn't say what was inside. I shrugged it off. I was used to hauling all sorts of stuff without knowing the specifics. As I hit the road with the cargo secured in the trailer, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The air in the cab felt heavy, and the usual hum of the engine seemed more ominous. Maybe it was just the anticipation of a long drive ahead. As the miles passed, I started noticing a couple of cars tailing me. Every time I changed lanes or slowed down, they matched my moves. Paranoia kicked in, and I thought maybe I was overthinking it. Maybe they were just fellow travelers going the same way. Night fell, and the dim glow of the dashboard was the only light in the cab. I had the eerie sense that I was being watched. The road was empty and the only sounds were the wind and the low rumble of the engine. I pushed the unsettling thoughts aside, focusing on reaching my destination. As I approached the town, the GPS guided me to a desolate area. No signs of life, just abandoned buildings and an eerie silence. Red flags waved, but I pushed on, determined to deliver the cargo and be done with it. The drop-off point was a rundown warehouse at the edge of town, no lights, no welcoming committee, just darkness. I hesitated, but the urgency of the job urged me forward. I parked the truck, opened the trailer, and that's when I saw it boxes upon boxes of weapons, illegal ones. Panic set in. I was hauling a load of trouble, and the shadowy figures I noticed earlier were now closing in. They weren't just random travelers, they were part of a criminal operation and I was unwittingly at the center of it. The men approached, their faces hidden in the darkness. They weren't here for a friendly chat. Fear crawled up my spine as they demanded the cargo. It became clear they weren't the type you could reason with. I fumbled for my phone, dialing 911 as quietly as possible. But luck wasn't on my side. One of them noticed and grabbed the phone, tossing it aside. Cold sweat coated my palms as the situation escalated. They forced me to unload the weapons, their eyes scanning the surroundings for any signs of unwanted attention. The desert night seemed to swallow us whole, and I felt like a pawn in a game I never signed up for. Once the cargo was in their hands, they vanished into the shadows, leaving me stranded in that desolate town. I sat in the cab, shaking wondering how I went from a routine delivery to a pawn in a criminal enterprise. I reported the incident to the police, but deep down, I knew the chances of catching these guys were slim. The road that used to symbolize freedom now felt like a trap, a reminder of the danger lurking in the seemingly mundane. I drove away from that town, haunted by the realization that my job had taken me into a world I never wanted to know. Back in the summer of 98, me and my buddies thought we'd be adventurers for a weekend. We decided to explore the backwoods of the Appalachians, just for kicks. We were clueless, excited, and full of bravado, typical small-town guys thinking we could conquer anything. Our plan was simple, hike the trails, camp out under the stars, and make some memories. We had no idea what was waiting for us in those dense woods. It all started when we stumbled upon an old, beat-up truck in a clearing. It looked like it had been there for ages, rust eating away at its once vibrant red paint. Curiosity got the better of us, so we circled the truck, 
trying to piece together its story. The air felt heavy, like the woods were holding onto a secret. As we approached, we saw bullet holes peppering the sides, and a quick search inside revealed abandoned belongings, clothes, some old food wrappers, and a tattered map. We laughed off the eerie vibes, attributing them to our overactive imaginations. That's when we found a faded newspaper clipping under the driver's seat. It told a story of a trucker gone missing in the 70s, his truck discovered in these very woods. They never found him, just his abandoned rig. Nightfall came fast, and we set up camp near the clearing, trying to shake off the unease from the truck's dark past. As we sat around the fire, strange noises echoed through the trees. We brushed it off as the usual sounds of the wilderness, but that didn't stop the chills running down our spines. Sleep came hard that night. We tossed and turned in our tents, each of us blaming the uncomfortable ground for our restlessness. But deep down, we all knew something was off. When the first light of dawn broke, we decided to leave that curse clearing behind. As we hiked away, the forest seemed to close in on us. Branches snapped behind us, and the air grew colder. We quickened our pace, glancing over our shoulders as if expecting something to leap out of the shadows. The unease lingered, refusing to let us shake it off. Hours later, we stumbled upon a dilapidated shack deeper in the woods. We cautiously approached, the air thick with tension. Inside, we found old photographs scattered on the floor. They were of the missing trucker, documenting his life on the road and his love for these very woods. Our hearts pounded as we realized we were being watched. The rustling outside grew louder, shadows dancing in the corners of our vision. Panic set in, and we bolted out of there, fear propelling us faster than reason. The forest became a maze, trees closing in on us as if conspiring with some unseen force. We heard whispers on the wind, sinister laughter that echoed through the trees. It felt like the very woods were alive with malevolence. Exhausted and disoriented, we stumbled upon the clearing with the abandoned truck again. Somehow, we'd circled back. The air was charged with an otherworldly energy, and the forest seemed to mock our futile escape. In the clearing, the truck's headlights flickered to life, casting an eerie glow. Panic took hold as we realized we were trapped in a sinister loop. Shadows moved around us, and the forest seemed to hunger for our fear. We made a desperate dash, blindly navigating the trees. The whispers grew louder, merging with the rustling leaves and snapping branches. It felt like the very essence of the missing trucker was haunting us, seeking revenge for disturbing his resting place. When we finally burst out of the woods, we were battered and bruised, our minds fractured by the nightmarish ordeal. The truck's headlights faded behind us, leaving the clearing in darkness once again. We never spoke of that night, the unspoken agreement lingering among us. I was just another trucker, wheels turning and cargo rolling, trying to make ends meet. Never thought my life would get tangled in some rich family drama. It all started when my usual route took me deep into the northeast, a place where money flowed like water, and power was measured by the size of your fleet. The Thompsons, a name synonymous with trucking royalty, owned a massive transport empire. Rumors whispered about family feuds, but I never cared much for gossip. All I wanted was to haul my load, get paid, and hit the open road again. But fate had other plans. One day, I got a call from Mr. Thompson himself, the patriarch of the trucking dynasty. He needed a reliable driver, and somehow my name came up. Honored, I accepted the offer, thinking it was just another job. Little did I know, I was stepping into a viper's nest of familial power plays and hidden agendas. The Thompson's empire was vast, with countless relatives vying for a piece of the pie. Loyalty shifted like the wind, and I found myself unwittingly caught in the crossfire. 
It started innocently enough. A few enigmatic glances, hushed conversations when I walked into the room. But it soon escalated into something far more sinister. One night, as I parked my rake in the family compound, I overheard heated arguments echoing through the luxurious halls. Family secrets spilled like gasoline, igniting the already tense atmosphere. I was a fly on the wall, witness to a dangerous dance of betrayal and greed. I tried my best to keep my distance, focusing on my deliveries and staying out of the Thompsons' internal struggles. But the shadows cast by family disputes are long and unpredictable. One evening, as I fueled up my truck, a disheveled cousin approached me, desperation in his eyes. He whispered of treachery within the family, and how my role unknowingly made me a pawn in their deadly game. I shrugged it off, thinking it was just the ramblings of a desperate man. But the weight of his words lingered, a foreboding cloud over my daily roots. The once lavish estate now seemed haunted, each luxurious corridor concealing the skeletons of familial discord. As I made my deliveries, tensions heightened within the Thompson family. It wasn't long before I became a pawn in their power struggle. Loyalties shifted like sand beneath my feet, and I found myself entangled in a web of deceit that I never signed up for. One evening, after unloading a shipment, a mysterious figure approached me in the dimly lit warehouse. It was one of the Thompsons, eyes filled with a mix of fear and desperation. He revealed the family's darkest secret, a plan to eliminate rivals and secure power, with me as the unwitting accomplice. Suddenly, I was at the center of a dangerous plot. Fear gripped me as I realized the magnitude of the Thompsons' machinations. The line between victim and accomplice blurred, and I felt the suffocating weight of a nightmare I couldn't escape. The fateful night arrived when the family's power struggle reached its boiling point. As I parked my truck, I heard the distant echoes of a violent confrontation. The once grand estate now resembled a battleground, and I stood on its outskirts, a helpless observer to the chaos unfolding. Betrayals, gunshots, and screams filled the air. It was a war waged within the walls of opulence, hidden from the prying eyes of the outside world. The Thompsons, once a symbol of wealth and influence, were now tearing each other apart. Caught in the crossfire, I retreated to my truck, heart pounding. The power struggle had erupted into a full-blown war, and I was the unwitting soldier dragged into the chaos. As I drove away from that hellish scene, I couldn't shake the feeling that the shadows of the Thompson family's deadly secrets would forever linger on my conscience. In the rearview mirror, the mansion stood as a testament to the destructive power of wealth and ambition. I was trucking through the desert, just me, the open road, and my trusty rig. The sun was beating down, and the heat seemed to stretch the horizon endlessly. It was one of those days where the heat waves dance on the asphalt, making it feel like you're driving through a mirage. I never expected it to turn into the nightmare it became. Out of nowhere, my truck coughed and sputtered, and then it just died. Great, I thought. Stuck in the middle of nowhere with nothing but sand and heat in every direction. I popped the hood, hoping it was just a minor issue, but my mechanical skills were about as impressive as a fish riding a bicycle. As I stood there, sweat dripping down my face, I saw a dust cloud in the distance. My initial relief at the prospect of help turned into wariness as a beat-up pickup truck approached. Two guys hopped out, both wearing worn-out jeans and faded flannels seemed like locals, and they offered to give me a hand. They poked around under the hood, nodded like they knew what they were doing, but their eyes told a different story. There was something off about them, a kind of intensity that made me uneasy. They exchanged glances when they thought I wasn't looking, and I couldn't shake the feeling that their helpful facade was hiding something darker. One of them, a wiry guy with a scruffy beard, suggested they tow my truck to their place. They assured me they had the tools to fix it up. 
It seemed like a lifeline at the time, but hesitation clawed at me. Still, what choice did I have? We drove for what felt like hours through the endless desert, and I couldn't shake the thought that we were heading deeper into the abyss. When we arrived at their so-called place, it was nothing more than a ramshackle collection of trailers surrounded by the vast emptiness of the desert. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the sand. That's when things took a turn. The atmosphere shifted, became heavy with something I couldn't quite put my finger on. The guys started acting strange, whispering to each other in hushed tones. I began to feel like a guest who'd stumbled into a party where he wasn't invited. As they worked on my truck, their behavior grew more erratic. I couldn't shake the feeling that their idea of fixing meant something entirely different. My gut screamed at me to get out of there, but my truck was still in pieces, and the desert offered no refuge. The night wore on, and it became apparent that their intentions were far from helpful. In the dim glow of a flickering lantern, I saw glints of something metallic, tools that seemed more suited for inflicting harm than repairing an engine. Panic set in as I realized I was in a situation way beyond a breakdown. I managed to distract them with small talk, all the while subtly edging closer to my truck. The desert night was silent, and every creak and murmur heightened my fear. With each tool they pulled out, my heart pounded louder, echoing in the vast emptiness around us. In a moment of desperate opportunity, when their attention wavered, I bolted for my truck. Adrenaline surged through me as I fumbled with the keys, praying it would start. The engine roared to life, and I peeled out of there, leaving those sinister shadows in the desert behind. I drove through the night, not stopping until I reached the safety of a well-lit truck stop. Fear and relief battled within me and I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd narrowly escaped a fate I didn't want to contemplate. As I looked back on that night, the desolate desert took on a new meaning, a place where the line between survival and the unknown blurred. Got my rig, the open road, and a schedule to keep. Nothing fancy. So, there I was, cruising through one of those small towns that time seemed to forget. Gas station on the left, diner on the right, typical pit stop on my journey. I'm grabbing a cup of coffee when a guy approaches, casual-like. He hands me a flyer, no words, just a picture of a truck and a date. I glance at him, puzzled, and he says, you look like you could use some excitement. I'm no thrill seeker, but I decide to keep the flyer, thinking maybe it's some local event. A few weeks later, I'm driving through the same area, and I see a sign, the one from the flyer. It was an underground truck race, no holds barred. Curiosity gets the better of me, and I figure, why not see what this is all about? I pull into this makeshift racetrack, trucks revving their engines like it's the Daytona 500. People are placing bets, the air thick with a mix of diesel fumes and anticipation. Now, I'm not one to gamble, but the energy was contagious. The organizers notice me and nod, signaling for me to join in. Before I can blink, I'm lined up with other truckers, engines roaring like beasts ready to be unleashed. The guy next to me smirks, first-timer, huh? I just nod, trying to act like I know what I'm doing. Little did I know what I was getting into. The race starts, and it's chaos. Trucks jostling for position, dust swirling in the air. It's like a scene from a Mad Max movie. I'm pushing my rig to the limit, adrenaline pumping through my veins. But as I glance around, something doesn't feel right. As the race progresses, I realize this isn't your typical competition. It's cutthroat ruthless. I see truckers using tactics straight out of a demolition derby. Bumpers grinding, metal scraping, it's a vehicular battlefield. Then, the organizer, a guy with a face like stone, announces a twist. Winners get a hefty cash prize, but losers, well, 
Let's just say it's a one-way ticket to something far worse than losing a race. I start to panic, realizing I've stumbled into something way darker than a daredevil race. The crowd is getting rowdy, the bets higher, and the pressure intensifies. There's no backing out now, the race has its claws in me. I'm navigating this chaotic course, dodging trucks hellbent on victory. It's like survival of the fittest, but in 18 wheelers. Every swerve, every near collision, the stakes are mounting. Then, it happens. A collision with another truck, a deafening crash, metal against metal. My heart races as I struggle to keep control. Smoke billows from the wreckage, and I realize this is more than just a race. It's a life or death game. As the race hurdles towards its conclusion, the reality sets in. I'm not just competing for a cash prize, I'm fighting for my life. The cheers of the crowd become a sinister symphony, and the finish line is both a salvation and a trap. I cross the finish line, a mix of relief and dread washing over me. The crowd erupts, and I'm handed a bag of cash. But that's not the end. The organizer approaches, a cold smile on his face. Congratulations, you survived. Until the next race, my friend. I'm left standing there, the cheers fading into an eerie silence. I look around at the other truckers, winners and losers alike. We're all part of this twisted underground race, bound by the asphalt and the shadows it conceals. As I drive away, the bag of cash beside me, I can't shake the feeling that I've stepped into a world I never wanted to know.